By the way, you cannot take the reciprocal of both sides until you have only one fraction on each side. A lot of students might have been tempted to take reciprocals here and just say that r23 equals 6 plus 4. But that is not legal algebraically. You can't take reciprocals until you've combined these into just one fraction. So you've got to combine these into just one fraction and then take the reciprocals. Otherwise, this would just be the sum formula. Another big mistake people make is they forget that this is 1 over r over here. A lot of people would just say, oh, the equivalent resistance is 10 24ths because they're lazy and they don't write down the left-hand side of the equation. So it's very important to write down both sides of the equation so we can see we have to take the reciprocal here. Okay, that would give us this resistance because these really were in parallel. Good. Okay. Um, so when we knew the voltage of the batteries, we put that in. Yeah, maybe we should have done that first. Yeah. We could have just carried the voltage from the battery along to the new picture because it's the same battery. And then we know the resistance for R1. It's still the same resistor, so we can carry that number along too. We didn't carry these numbers along because we replaced these resistors with an equivalent resistor. But we can carry this number along because this is the same resistor. Excellent. Good. Um, and we know that the sum of the two resistors is 24 volts. Um, and we know that the current will be the same through all the devices. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you another trick. We should now replace these two resistors with another equivalent resistor. Okay. Now, there is a way you can almost do this step in your head, because it's so obvious. But I think for a beginner, it's better to do this on paper. So let's combine these. Now, this will be 1, R, 2, 3, because it's equivalent to all of them together. Oh, what can we numbers can we put down in this picture? Um, that'll be 5.4, because they're in series. Because these are in series, they just add. So this resistance will now be 5.4, 5.4 ohms. Good. Um, okay, and then we know the voltage. Just one more point. These were not in series, so we could not use that formula here. Notice how putting these together allowed these now to be in series, so they're now easier to work with. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Nothing. Um, so we know the voltage of the battery is 24 volts. Um, so we know the voltage. Is, is um, also 24 volts. We couldn't have said that over here, but now that there's only one resistor, we can pull this voltage across. That's the advantage of always drawing a new picture with fewer resistors. Excellent. So now we can calculate using Ohm's law the current. That's right. For the resistor. And, and that'll give us 4.4. And we know that the current of the resistor will be the same as the current of the battery, so that's also 4.4 over there. Great. 24 divided by 5.4 is 4.4. Excellent. Mm -hmm. We couldn't really figure out the current as easily here because there was too many resistors. Right. Excellent. So now you can take the current on the battery and bring it back to our um, battery. Right, it's the same battery, so it should still be 4.4 amps. Good. Yeah. Um, and we know that the current's going to be the same for R1 and R23. They're in series with the battery. Uh -huh. So they should also have 4.4 amps. Excellent. So now we can calculate the voltage for R1. We're on a roll now. OK, excellent. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Three times 4.4 using Ohm's mm -hmm. law. Good. So now we can go back. Anything else we can figure out about this picture? Uh, Did you figure out this voltage? Yeah, we can figure out the total voltage. Yeah, so let's go ahead and figure out everything here. Okay. So what would this voltage be? Um, so that would be 10.56 volts. And we could check 10.56 plus 13.2. That's 23.76, which is pretty close to 24. We're just getting something that's a little bit off because of rounding error. Okay? So the safest thing is to figure out everything we can about each picture. Okay? okay. And now what? So now we know the current of the battery in the first circuit. Which is? 4.4. Right. And we know the current of R1 is also 4.4. Because these are the same R1. We already figured out its voltage is 13.2. 13.2 volts. Excellent. Um, and then we can figure out the volts for both R2 and R3 because 24 minus, it has to add up to 24 volts. Right. Each one does with R1. Right. Um, so we already, we already figured out. So it'll be half of that total voltage right there. R1 
form is 13.2 full. Right. So R2 will be 10.8 um, full. 24 minus 13.2. Okay. Yeah, so it'll yeah. be about 10.8. Uh -huh. um, actually, these two numbers should be the same. It's just same. rounding error. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't have been rounding off so much because these things are not coming out the same. This is an important point that can save us time. Um, we know that if you go from here to here, yeah. you're losing 10.56 units of height. Yeah. Well, that means that going from here to here, we're losing 10.56 units of height. So this is important when you're doing the homework. When you're replacing things in parallel with an equivalent resistor, the things that are in parallel have the same voltage drop as their equivalent resistor. The things that are in parallel have the same voltage drop as their equivalent resistor because they represent the same path between the, they represent going between the same two points. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, it's too bad things are not coming out exactly the same. Um, so depending on how you round off, this will be 10.8 or 10.56. I'll just pull back the number from over here. So this would be 10.56. And what would be the voltage drop across this resistor? 10.56 volts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's left? Um, and we know that. Oh, so now we can just calculate the current here. Mm -hmm. R2 and R3. Okay, so let's figure that out. So for R2, it'll be 1.76. Mm -hmm. And for R3, Now we can check that because this current plus this current should equal the total current from the battery. 4.4, that would have given us an alternative way to figure that out, actually. This isn't coming out right at all. Well, we got the basic idea. We must have made some uh, arithmetic mistakes somewhere along the way, though. So let's see, 10.56 divided by 6 is 1.76. Wait, what were you saying? You mean that Oh, the, no, I'm confused. You mean that the current for R2 and R3 should add up to the current? Should add up to 4.4. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying the wrong thing. These two currents should add up to 4.4. Yeah. That's right. Let's try that. 1.76 plus 2.64. Ah, they do add up. Okay, excellent. Okay, so these both come out to be 4.4. So actually, once we figured out this, we could have figured out this either from Ohm's Law or by subtracting it. So there's often more than one way you can figure things out. That's why you can check your work at the end. And now we figured out three numbers about all the resistors and two numbers about the batteries, so we're done. Now, depending on exactly what the question asked you for, you might not have had to figure out every single thing about every single picture. Um, however, the safest thing is to figure out everything about every picture, and then you can answer whatever questions they're giving. So notice again that we started by making each picture a little bit simpler than before, and then we went backwards in the opposite direction. Right. Uh, in this case, we had to draw three separate pictures. You might even see a problem where you have to draw four pictures. So you just keep putting in equivalent resistors until you get to a picture with only one resistor. Uh, and then you can figure out everything about the picture with one resistor, and then you can carefully take those numbers backward until you get back to the most complicated picture. This is a pretty important type of problem, so you'll probably get a chance to practice this quite a bit uh, in the homework. So um, remember, that how we had, remember how we started today? We started by reviewing the concepts from the previous sessions to make sure we haven't forgotten the units. Mm -hmm. uh, and you remembered a bunch of them, but I think one or two you might have forgotten. So now might be a good time to just take a piece of paper and just write down all the key units. Force, field, potential, potential energy, charge. And write down um, their basic formulas. How, write down especially their units. Because today, we added a, a whole bunch of new um, concepts. We added current and resistance. And it's important to know the current, the, uh, the symbols and uh, units for those new concepts as well. And next week, you're going to get even more concepts. So unless you have like one piece of paper that you can keep reviewing that has all the key concepts in their units, um, all the concepts are likely to just keep getting more and more confused in our minds as we go along. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.